Hello, the Sonic City Council is now in session. Thank you again for inviting us into your headphones, your car, your home, your mind. I'm here as always with my co-host and creativity, Davey Sipes. Good to see you, Captain. Yeah. And orale, meatbags, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on our exploration of art, culture, commerce, and industry through the DIY perspective. We're going to get into it today, aren't we, sir? Yes, we are, which means we have to call this council meeting to order. Mm. <laughs> Gavel's so good. Nobody gavels. You know, when it comes to the podcast with gavels, I think you're going to get the award this year. Well, I don't know. This is where my, <laughs> the, the gavely, I'm going to get the gavely. The gavely. Yeah. That's the genius you got. <laughs> uh, we're gonna, no Grammy for you. You know, eventually when it's safe to do so, we'll have an office Christmas party. Like there's an office or there would be a Christmas party and you'll present me with some sort of golden gavel of best gaveler of, you know. Basically, like getting a coffee mug that's the like <laughs> best dad ever or something. I love this. This makes me feel like eventually I'm going to have to rent an office building for a couple of months, hire some people, all in the pretense of a Christmas party, just to present you with this gavel. Is it? Okay, this is where my brain goes, and I'm letting a little bit of my weird insight out towards the audience. Scaly. When I hit the gavel, I think of that line from NWA uh, when MC Ren is uh, oh. in, in uh, Fuck the Police, when MC Ren goes, Fuck the Police, and Ren said it with authority. And like the with Ren said it with authority, I kind of think that when I hit the gavel. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for that deep pull. That's insight. Yeah. Insight into the Jesse. Yeah. But that could very well be like That's any you, any yeah. reference that gets associated with that in my brain. And so like I just think that vibe like right before the gavel hits. So the that's like your head. emphasis bit. Yeah. It's like you hit the gavel and said it with authority. Nice. Yeah. yeah kind of. I don't know. That's anyway. That's in case you wonder what was ticking under this beanie. That's what's going on. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny because that's edgy. Like that's what I, f I would assume that would be like what I would be thinking. But instead, I'm always thinking it's like a tiny Gallagher down there. <laughs> it's just like all we need is a tiny fucking watermelon, <laughs> or whatever his brother was. Yeah. Gallagher too. That's just stupid. Yeah, little anyway, bit. Little, little Gallagher. Little bit. A little Canadian throwing a Rick and a Morty guy reference. A little there. gavel, but it looks like a sledgehammer in his hands. Yeah, because he's <laughs> little. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm excited for today, man. I mean, I'm excited for every podcast because I get to hang out with you guys and, you know, and, you know, talk with people and do stuff. But this mm -hmm. is somebody that we have not actually formally met outside of this podcast. Uh, and it is the lovely Jess Fenton uh, out of New York City. Jess Fenton. Yeah. She uh, is an engineer. She's also a musician and has done the uh, YouTube series Proof in Music, which highlights women working in the music industry. Uh, and yeah, has a great perspective and take on, you know, that side of things being that like, you know, as much as we're in it and involved in music, you know, it's like, we don't have that perspective that she has on things. And so it's just nice to talk to her about that and see where she's coming from. 110%. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's also cool because it's, I've talked to her on Instagram before this and in setting this up. And so it was actually nice to like have some sort of, even if it's virtually just some sort of face to face introduction. Yeah. 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 I mean, I like, I like, you know, I like to keep it anonymous. Yeah. You know, the well, eyes wide shut. I mean. I wear that mask everywhere. Well, right. But, you know, that gets into a whole nother rabbit hole of conversation, you know. Good. Sammy, Stanley Kubrick died around the time he was making that movie. Is it a conspiracy? I don't know. Do I have any evidence to back that up? Some I don't know. I think that Stanley Kubrick and Stan Lee are the same guy. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You could start that rumor here, though. Yeah. This is a good place <laughs> to start that. Off on a that. tangent. <laughs> Eventually, you know, we'll have enough of a following where people will be dissecting these videos, and then they'll pull that out and try to link it to some sort of real-life evidence at some point. Oh, I'd like that. I I'd like for anything that came out of my crippled brain to be used <laughs> in a conspiracy theory later. <laughs> Disclaimer, everything I say is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's my garbage. Yeah, Aww. but it's mine. This is my garbage, and this is this is my truth. My what? truth is my garbage. <laughs> One person's trash is another person's <laughs> treasure. Garbage, yeah. And on that note, <laughs> let's get into let's the get episode. Into it. Let's talk to Jess. <laughs> How 
had though on Instagram today for a bidet. Yeah, mm. I um, <laughs> I I listen to yeah, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and it seems like I don't know. Apparently, the listeners of podcasts are like the target market for bidets because what? they're on all the comedy oh, no. podcasts. They're on like no. a couple music podcasts, and it's like. I, I hear about them all the time. It's so. because that second, that third wave is coming. So all the bidet companies are like, oh, we, we got to get on this. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get on this. This is our time. Right. Right. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about bidets, man. I don't know. No, no. I, don't, I don't know. No. Yeah. Make the wrong move and you've got water everywhere. I mean. Yeah. See? I mean, I mean, dab and dry forever. I'm not against it, but I'm definitely like, that's a home thing. You know, I don't think that would be a good thing to have in public, but I don't know. Well, that's, I guess, I mean, a lot of places in the world, that is the standard. Yeah. Is that there's just like, you're going to wash yourself with a with a nozzle type of thing yeah, and then a, get a back high, to business. A, a high pressure hose. Yeah. <laughs> high pressure hose. Yeah. Well, hey. There's you like, know, you're more, clean, but you're wet. And it's like, oh, well. <laughs> more, more power to you, I guess. So. Ha! All right. Jess Fenton, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, is it Jessica or Jess Fenton? Because I know that's usually what you go by. Is on it Instagram. just Jess or just Jessica? I I guess Jess, but it's weird because like she my resume Jess. or like LinkedIn or whatever it just says Jess because it's easy. Yeah. But when I introduce myself, it always comes out as Jessica, which I can't explain. Yeah. So mm. really, it's it's your choice. Okay, uh, I think I'll stick with Jess. I think that's sort yeah. of a, it's a it's a it's a cool name. I like it, and in my unbiased right. opinion, being a Jesse, so very <laughs> yeah, close well, to see, that. That's my say. nickname to my my friends and family. It's actually Jesse. So oh, Jess, okay. Yeah, well, and I'm kind of. How kinda, about we call both of you Jess for the episode? Yeah, well, and it's funny because my dad <laughs> calls me Jess, and huh. like, and my mom will do that too. But to everybody else, it's Jesse. So it's kind of the kind of so the we're opposite. opposites. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Mm. Yeah, and Let's I just always confuse everybody. And <laughs> yeah, I always just... get the I E at the end of my name too, even though it's J E S S E. People... That's so funny. I get just so the E. <laughs> yeah, but it should be an I E. Oh man! What? See, you, what's happening? You, We're bizarro you, world versions of each other. Well, yeah, I was gonna say you <laughs> understand like, the struggle just on the opposite side. Oh. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, cool. I um, yeah, it's so cool to have you on because uh, one of our you know, more recent guests was the lovely uh, Raylan Janicki out of Nashville, yes. Tennessee, and she was on your series called Proof in Music, which I absolutely love and. And that's how I found out about you and what you were doing. So it's so great to have you on here and to talk more about like who you are and what you do. Yeah, thanks. Raylan's awesome. Yes, she Pretty is. Fun. Like it, plain and simple. We uh, plain and simple. We both united uh, as friends because we realized that we're both equally uh, strong in the doofus realm of just being some, you know, basically <laughs> just being a doofus in our own right in certain ways. So we we bonded very quickly. Um, but it was just cool seeing her on you know, seeing her in that capacity, like actually seeing somebody engineer in real time and doing their thing. And I just yeah. love the whole way that the show is set up because it's, it's highlighting women in the music industry, but it's not doing it in a patronizing light. It's literally just like, these people are fucking awesome and super talented. And I just loved that whole angle of it of like, yeah, they're just really great at what they do, period. Like that should be the end but, yeah. of the conversation. Mm -hmm. That. Thank you. Yeah. That that's literally the whole point. It's yeah. like can we just stop debating this? Yeah. And just know that we we mean meaning women. Yeah. Do this work. Yeah. And here here's proof. Like boom. Yeah. Now hire them. Or consider them for hire. Yeah. And it's exactly. like you know? Yeah, if you get yeah. a lot, like, if, if someone's great at what they do and they blend into, like, whatever that job situation is, like, if you click with somebody, it's like, that's the criteria right there. And it's like, and being on like not the recording side of things but on the live side of the industry i feel the same way because like i've met various crew people like different lighting designers that were women audio engineers that were women and it's mm -hmm. like we're all like weird that's the thing above being men and women it's like if you get into that <laughs> line of work we're all weirdos and it's like if you can hang True. in that weird party like fuck it i don't give a fuck where you're coming from you know yeah and absolutely you know, it's just, I love that angle of the show. So I just thought it was a really cool concept. And Thank if you, you. Yeah. And if you can kind of talk about, like, how that specific concept came to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't want to have a series that talked about why there's a lack of women right. in the music production side. Because 
we, we already know that. Like, we're just mm. not considered. Well, there's there's this endless debate of like, well, they're they're not interested or they're not good at it or right. I just can't find anybody. Blah blah blah. And right. my answer to all of that is like, no, none of that's true. There's actually a ton of women doing this, mm-hmm. and here's proof. And I I just wanted a series where they talk shop and then demonstrate what they're talking about. Like, and that's it. Like, yeah. play, basically the series that I've been wanting to see as an audio engineer um, getting deep into this business of just wanting to get the perspective of women. I mean, I, I binge YouTube videos featuring men all the time because mm-hmm. it's so valuable and I appreciate so much when, when guys will put their skill set out there and share how they did this or how they did that. But I also would appreciate a woman's perspective. And so I, I just made the series for that reason alone. And just to like shut up the conversation of like, Ugh, can we stop debating this? We're here. We're doing this. Here's proof. Yeah, that's awesome. So that, well that's kind of like the, the whole point. Yeah. And it's a great point, too, because I'm I'm the same way where like and I know you are in various subjects and different things where it's like sure why not yeah when (laughs) when you have a topic that you're really into whether it's you know and you're a musician too so you understand this that like if you're going down a music rabbit hole or an engineering rabbit hole or a tech rabbit hole or gear you want to find any valuable information that you can on that subject and so not only just creating a space where people can talk shop but where women can do that and it's not portrayed in this weird sort of like light of like like you're talking about like oh isn't this tragic there aren't enough women doing this like no here's a bunch of awesome women that are already doing this and here's their just their process on things yeah you know yeah and at all different levels too and that that's why i wanted Mm -hmm. to to not just like go for you know like these super high level grammy nominee nominated people but like people who are doing it at all levels you know like people in, in their bedroom studios pushing out these amazing productions where you'd have no clue that it was done yeah. in a bedroom, and I'm talking about Hanjia. And then, but then you've got like Anna Frick, who's in a, a Grammy mm. winning studio. You know, I wanted I wanted it to be at all levels from people at all different points in their careers, just so so anybody could identify with where they were at. Right. And just to answer the question of like, there's value in all of the levels. Like we're we are clearly coming up and and like doing this. Yeah. So. Like, just just hire us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hire them, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Every exactly. every stage is a has its own learning curve, and it's it's its own dojo, really. You mm-hmm. know, you're gonna yeah. learn. And there's no mercy. No, there no there isn't. And it's uh, you know, there's valuable things to be learned at every level, and you don't get to that really high regarded level until you've gone through the you know recording stuff in your bedroom yeah it, it is yeah yeah it's it's not necessarily a clear-cut ladder on how you get there but it's definitely a ladder and stepping stone it's like paying the dues as we once said upon a time right paying the I mean, dues. Right, yeah, in a yeah sense. totally okay absolutely yeah and um it, it's i love that it covers all these different people from different parts of the country oh, yeah. and in different environments and it just does put that perspective on it and also like when Ray Lim was on here, we had gotten to a deep discussion on mastering and like, oh yeah, just talking about nice. it from why is it important? Just because I feel like coming from a musician side of things, you know, you can look at it like, you know, especially if you're doing things on a DIY level or on a budget, it's like, why do I need to get my music mastered? Like it's already mixed, you know, and her breaking that down in person was like really valuable of like, this is why you need to do that. But seeing her on your series it was like oh wow i'm actually seeing somebody master something in real time and yeah. it just it doesn't matter how many times somebody could explain it or if that person explains it to you seeing that in the moment i went oh i get it this is like a really finite extra layer of mixing that adds yeah polish. like super mm-hmm. super skilled yeah like when she i don't remember if i put it in the show or not but she cites specific frequency she's like oh yeah i know this is going to be between like 82 and 110 I'm like what <laughs> like yeah, you could just hear right. hear this mix and know like oh wait let me pull the bass out at 82 like bloop, let me notch that out at half a db yeah. oh yeah that's going to make a big difference like the skill level that is involved in mastering is just like unfathomable yeah like and and to get to see that in person and to just hear her talk through it and i could only show like 
I mean, total collectively, it was probably only like six or seven minutes out of, I was there for probably an hour, you right. know, like I couldn't do like an hour long thing. So I could, I could, I was only highlighting certain bits and pieces to try to prove the point, but to be there in real time and have her walk through the whole thing was like just mind blowing. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, and you know, it just, it, it allows you to, it, <laughs> it allows you to see a whole nother side of things that you wouldn't necessarily get to see. And like, even on mm -hmm. some of those, uh, like just seeing how mics are placed in real time and like, oh yeah, um, I'm blanking on the name of the engineer and where you were. I believe it was Denver, but there was an engineer that mic'd up a drum kit for a session. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's really cool to see that. You oh, know? yeah. Same thing. I could only sh I could only show like highlights when <laughs> we actually ended up putting up 18 mics. And that was Lillian in Seattle. Yes. OK. Um, yeah. And and I was there for probably two hours, which wow. is <laughs> y you guys know, as musicians, like when you set up a kit, usually that's what takes the longest time is like mm -hmm. a good six hours of setup and getting levels and. And just, it's such a fine, fine, finely tuned process. Like, you know, so I couldn't, I couldn't do like the whole, the whole thing of, of the 18 mics, but there were 18 mics in the room. Yeah. Um, wow. But it was cool. It was really cool to hear like, how, what does one do with 18 mics? Like when I walked in that room, she's like, we're going to set up 18 mics. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> how is this going to go? Like, I, yeah. I didn't know that two of them were going to be you know, in the stairwell for reverb. I didn't know one oh. of them was going to be down the elevator shaft mm -hmm. for a different type of reverb, you know, and then all these different room mics. So it was like, it was really special to, to, to get to walk through that process and not just watch it, but hear the logic behind it. Yeah. So, and it's, I, I feel like out of any area in engineering, just when you get into miking drums, it's so subjective because it's, yeah. it's not just based on the tones that, a musician or artist wants or the engineer is looking for you might also be considering like the space you're in so it's not just like oh i want oh, this yeah. sound you're like oh we're in a really big room and like hey let's throw some mics up and you know maybe if you have a like balcony corners up yeah. yeah let's throw it in the corner let's you know put a mic <laughs> in the stairwell because you're going to hear the drums there and it's like it can get really like specific and subjective. So like, totally. I feel like anytime you get, you get an insight too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike's outside and shit. Yeah. Anytime you get a insight into that process or I get to see how somebody does it, even not as a drummer, I'm always intrigued and like, Oh, okay. Like how, how are you miking a kit? Yeah. But also that shows the importance of the communication that you have with that engineer Yeah, of like how creative are they going to get and how are they going to factor you in as the artist of what you're you're hearing in your head? You know, are you hearing the big Led Zeppelin drums with like a huge vaulted yes. ceiling or are you hearing something super tight? And are they willing to work with you to find a studio and engineer a, a sound that that you're hearing? And, and can and then they can can they push you to right. like. Well, maybe let's try an omni mic, and you're going to walk around it with the tambourine and get this weird surround sound. So I think, I think it's important to have those those conversations with engineers up front to just you know, like you said, like if you get along and you guys are both weird, like you know, <laughs> that that that's a big help yeah. like, to making a good album or a good song. Yep. So and, and Lillian was of course amazing in in mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, and also getting into that like. I feel like you traveling around and doing that project and going to see different engineers in different parts of the country, like I imagine because, you know, you're also an engineer as well. So you're sort of wearing multiple hats of, you know, filmmaker and musician and, you know, engineer and multifaceted. I feel like you're pulling so much of it just for your own personal knowledge. Like when you get back home and you're working on projects because you're literally just you're hearing the, you know, all of the raw info that we're only getting maybe, you know, a fraction of in the episode. So you're getting yeah. like, you know, a few hours, you know, like seeing this whole process and you're going, wow, I never thought about doing something like that before. Yeah. I, yeah. And that makes me like the luckiest person ever is I just have this huge library, library of, of these custom tutorials by these really amazing women yep. that were willing to walk me through the process. Yeah. So I thought about releasing you know, just like uncut versions. I'm mm, just like, okay, here's, here's the entire 18, 18 mics. Just, I don't know, just because I shouldn't be the only one who gets to sit in on that. Yeah. I think th there might be a few people out there who, who might find it fun. Yeah. Well, there's definitely an audience for oh. that because especially with YouTube mm -hmm. and like, exactly. Yeah. You give it the right kind of clickbaity title and everybody's on that. It's like, <laughs> see what they I'm did really with 18 that. mics. You won't believe what happens <laughs> next. It's like, and, and then, and then you Shit, take, I gotta a, hire you. take a thumbnail of your face going, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and then it's like, you won't believe how many mics are used. <laughs> they did what in the stairwell? <laughs> how? <laughs> yeah, like. Oh my god, that's great. Yeah, I'm I, not. I, see, that's where my create my creativity dies when it comes to promoting. I'm like, I don't know, just watch it. <laughs> oh, I, I I know. It's like that's I'm that's the really one. That's, bad at that. Yeah, that's the one thing I struggle with too. And I, I do too to an extent. I think it's easier yeah. to do it for the next person because you see what's so obviously great about them. It's easier than yeah. looking within and being like, what's the best position for what I do in the marketplace? Because then I always think about, oh, do I even like myself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, and then I'm like, better go write a song about that. And right. The cycle like just myself? keeps going over and over and over. <laughs> right. It's like when you look at your stuff, it's like, I don't know, we did a thing and like, check it out. I hope you like it. But when yeah, you're looking at your it. project, it's like, oh, yeah, you could do this, this and this. Yeah, and like, so I perfect. feel like you come up with way more ideas to help promote other people's stuff than your own sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, some truth so, to that. so we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll Let's exchange converse. ideas. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's I don't know. That's just so cool. And like. Even undertaking an endeavor like that, you know, like being able to, to to travel and like, you know, going to all different parts of the country. Because you went to L.A., Seattle, Denver, Nashville, and New York is your then, home base. So Yeah, so that was easy. Yeah, Boston. but how, how did you actually make it to all the different parts of the country? And like, how is the logistics of actually setting that stuff up? You know, I mean, it, it wasn't that hard. I mean, the, the biggest risk was... Well, first of all, I'll back up and say that I had uh, a massive bank of air miles, um, so that helped. Nice. And, and that was from a job that I had as a guitarist where I was flown across the country every month from, from California to D.C. for a gig. I had a monthly like standing, oops, standing gig. So I, I ended up banking these miles. So that's how I was able to do that without like financially crushing myself. Right. Um, but, but the real trick of it was reaching out to these people. Mm. Well, first of all, I had to find them, which was not hard. Let me state for the record, not hard to find a woman. You hear that audience? Working. They weren't hard to find. It <laughs> wasn't hard. Yeah. So I found them and I would email them and as is just a stranger. So I was just this random person like reaching out like, hey, um, I'm making this series <laughs> about uh, you know, women. I want to feature women actually working in the studio and talking shop. Do you want to do it? And uh, luckily, they all said yes and were cool with having a total stranger fly across the country and show up with cameras and, you know, come into their space, sometimes their homes, their studios and 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 talk shop. So, yeah. like, the risk was that they didn't know who I was. I had never met them. Right. Uh, but yet we were both so, you know, into the idea of doing it that we were like, well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. You know, there was for me that the risk of like, well, if somebody ghosts me, well, then I guess I'm just hanging out in whatever city for a couple of days just for fun. That right. never happened. Um, but, but yeah, but but leg I mean, that was the weird part was like I was just a total stranger reaching out and they had to say yes to a stranger coming into their their space right. to talk about their most coveted thing, like mm -hmm. their skill, you know, their jobs. Right. But I mean, logistically, it was just like, OK, I'll just can I come on this day? And we'd work out a day and I'd fly in and, um, and just do it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so that, that wasn't that hard. It was fun. Yeah. And it looked like That's you, cool. um, I didn't remember the actual credits of it, but it looked like you had one or two crew people with you, like camera people <laughs> and sound people and stuff. Yeah. So I would, I would source a person in every city. So I would ask whoever I was going to film, like, Hey, do you know somebody who can help me? Oh. And they camera always came operator through. or somebody. Yeah, just to someone who can hit record or, yeah. you know, do this or that. So I lucked out in that everybody came through and, and offered offered some help. Yeah, that's, that's so, awesome. That's it really a, came together. Hell yeah. yeah. That's a smart way to do it, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I, if I do it again, I would love to have, like, dedicated people doing yeah. dedicated roles. Like, somebody just for audio, somebody just for lights, somebody just for cameras. Because it's really hard to do it all. Uh, with just me and like again a stranger, so having to like boss around somebody that you've never met, like hey, can you do this and that? Yeah, you know. Well, and, and when they don't know, like just and I feel like this way as musicians too. When you mm. first get to work with people, that when you're first feeling each other out in the sense of like where everybody's coming from personally, you don't want to necessarily talk to them like you've worked with them for like you know five or ten years and go like, hey, can you just do this? Because if, like, I'm talking to you that way, or you talk to me that way, and we're just kind of being matter-of-fact about stuff, it's not going to be perceived as rude just because we know, like, 
we're friends and we've known each other for a while, but you just yeah. walk into a situation with a total stranger, you know, crew person, then it's like, you don't want to come off as like demanding or like just, oh, do this, do this and this. It's like, no, you kind of yeah. have to like be a little Finesse. bit. Yeah. You have to, you know, be a little more personable, I guess. Yeah. And then like simultaneously be on camera. Like that's what I had to do. Like mm-hmm. constantly checking, like, is this person, are they watching the camera? Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> like, you were a great am host. Am I in focus? Oh, yeah. So oh, would you, you watch Thanks. like playbacks between takes of stuff or how did that all come together? If no, you're on, I would on just, you just, I would watch just it later, like a daily hope, hope it worked. Hope it worked. I would, yeah, the because I didn't off, have a, friend. like, I mean, you know, I didn't want to take so much time from these people. Yeah. I mean, it was about two or three hours per person. Anything longer than that, it's like invasive and exhausting <laughs> yeah. for me and them. So I, I was just hoping for the best. I mean, Anna's. I don't want to point it out, but like Anna's episode is, is slightly out of focus. <laughs> so like, you know, it would have been good for me to stop and check, but I just didn't have time to do it. Yeah. I think so. It's so there's a bunch focus, of technical it errors. Style. It goes with her style. <laughs> yeah. Pretend it's, it's a filter. It's, it's an <laughs> exactly. Pretend it's a filter. Um, it's it's a filter, an intentional you know? cinematic well, old choice. School I decided to go with the soft focus <laughs> right. for yeah. this interview. Heck yeah. 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 The last one, it's the last all episode. Yes. Yeah. It, you know. yeah. Oh, there's technical errors. Like, crazy throughout the whole thing but i mean i'm not yeah. like a filmmaker like i don't no that's not what that was i don't about. know i was, was learning as i was aspect. going yeah, yeah. it's so, about, heart. about the content within you the know, film for sure. it, yeah it's the heart of the, the message matter. yeah the message oh the yeah. heart of the matter <laughs> heart, heart of the heart. matter <laughs> that was the that was the previous name of this you throw podcast shit out there, i'm gonna be like i'll be right on it <laughs> <laughs> okay uh that's awesome yeah well and i was gonna say i, I don't know if you wanted to Getting any questions in? Because I, I got all know. types of questions. I wrote stuff down for once. Like, okay, I got organized okay. and, um, and did research. But, but you go, go more, go okay. more with the question. Okay. I got plenty of questions. Um, well, and you know, it's so funny because <laughs> it's it's weird how perception works. I think because when mm. you first are introduced to somebody and what they do, and it's not necessarily the their main interest or passion, you kind of think of them as that. And because. I discovered your work through this series. I think like, oh, you're a filmmaker and you also do engineering stuff. But in reading your website and looking at your credentials, it's like, oh, no, you're an engineer that made a really good series as well. And then you're also a musician and all these different things. So like for you, I don't know, where is your main focus and passion? Is it on playing? Is it engineering? Has it varied like... Mm. Not not to not to put question. you in a box or anything, but it's just it's interesting. Define yourself. Yeah, because like I, I don't know. It's just when someone is as talented and multifaceted as you are, it's like I don't know where is that where does that perspective go no, for you? Yeah, well, I, I'll say the number one passion is is music. Okay, like I love playing guitar. I love playing drums. I love making music. Constantly making making something in Pro Tools, whether I share it or not, or if it goes anywhere or not. That's like the number one. Um, but you don't necessarily earn money doing that. Right. <laughs> so I I also love all things audio. So I do a lot of podcast engineering, editing, and mixing. Um, but yeah, I mean, the anything creative. I, I just like making things, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. But I love audio. I love working on podcasts. I love mixing. Mix engineering is one of my favorite paths as far as like being hired out by artists and stuff. Is I love mixing. Um, but really the, the number one is, is music making. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like, I like making videos too, that was a, but that was a beast. I don't know. Like I, I had to stop. I, I, that burnt me out big time. <laughs> right. Cause I was learning how to do it as I was doing it. So it's hard. Right. So yeah, right. it's a whole, it's a whole different ball game, but I, I needed to do it. So I just did it. Right. Do you, yeah. do you feel like if the right idea or project came along, that's something that you would want to attempt to do again? Or you feel like you're kind of just, I'm, I'm good with that for, I don't know, uh, the conceivable yeah, Like video-wise? Yeah, or yeah. just um, doing what you did, but with another subject matter, basically. Yeah, I, I would, yeah, I would go for it again. I mean, it, it would almost seem like a waste not to with everything that I learned along the way. Yeah. Cause now it's like okay. Now That's that I've d- I've been through it, now I n- now I know what not to do or what to do. Yeah. So yeah, I would I would, yeah, for the right project, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think you're really That's reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I would I would love to see more at some point. Just you know, if you ever feel like doing that again, because I really enjoyed just seeing the series, and I thought you were a really good host at the way you presented it, and also like 
just certain Thank camera you. angles and the way you would like introduce shots and stuff. It was like, I don't know. It just felt like a really <laughs> professional thing. And like, I, I think I got away with it. Like, that was just pure luck. Oh, more than that. I, I think you uh, I think not, I got no, away with it. Yeah. Yeah. I pick apart a lot of like movies and film yeah. and things and video productions on oh, the really? daily. So yeah, you, I was like, yeah, what oh, the last so far. I was like, nope, somebody knows what they're doing. He he's the actual like yeah. movie yeah. film buff. I, and, I pull yeah. shit apart on the regular in front of him. But yeah. yeah no. <laughs> well cool. Well, thank you. That's yeah. that's awesome though. That Hells yeah. You weren't immediately repulsed <laughs> no you know what it, it all comes down to um uh, the idea of uh like ryan Connolly says who's definitely one of the people i look up to in film he's uh, the idea of confidence you have to develop like you have to instill a confidence like from yourself through to the audience with every moment and that's mm. what i got in in what i watched of the series so far is that there's a confidence in like this this story is being told and it's being told not because of there's any sort of there's no endangerment of these the, the women in this industry it's just like we're shining a light because it's it's just good. It's just we're here to show how good these things are, and that confidence comes through. Ah, oh, thank you. You're welcome. I'm so glad to hear I'm that. I'm a film nerd. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, did have fun with color color grading. I will say that. Ah, uh, see. You probably noticed. Like, always playing with editing. That, <laughs> I got a little fun. <laughs> yeah. I probably should have like backed off the color grading. <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, we'll talk yeah. about that later. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, it came out good. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's uh, something I wonder about this because some people just kind of stick to their lane in when they're creative people and they just do music. That's or, me. Yeah, Thank and you. You, you, yeah. You, you teach as well. Davey's a teacher, but sure, so, he's... Yeah. Cool. yeah, but... I love kids. Yeah, yeah but you, uh, <laughs> you also primarily... You're just a musician primarily, I would say. Like, you have different passions and hobbies and stuff, but what you put your creative energy into is making music. I'd say it's kind of like, I mean, uh, I definitely do not have uh, the accomplishments I'm looking for yet in any of the hobbies, as you say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess it's, I would say kind of like, I like creating things. Like Jess said, it's about creating stuff. It's like, I really have a lot of, uh, a lot of different things I want to get going besides mm -hmm. music for sure. But music seems to be the one thing that I have a little bit more of a, um, I think what it comes down to is the ability to connect with other people through what you do right. is a factor. And I'm just so, I, I'm just now getting to the point where I'm getting okay at connecting with people ah, well. on an emotional level and just normal last ways. But the only way I did it before this, you know I mean, was music. Right. It was like, you know, growing up playing music and meeting people like that is like, it always was like being on board a pirate ship Yep, is the idea. So imagine what kind of shit goes on on a pirate ship though. Right. You know what I mean? It's, but yeah, the it's camaraderie. that kind of sense of inclusion that I got from the camaraderie, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why I stick to the music. Right. And, you know, with me, I love, um, you know, I'm a writer as well. So, like, I have a weekly column uh, and a paper here, and I also just write stories on my own time, and I'm trying to pursue that. But I also, you know, make music as well. And, you know, I'm a bass player and I have a band, and so I write in the context of that. And I wanted to ask you this, being that you have a bunch of different passions and interests that, you know, also take up a lot of your time. How do you feel like you effectively manage, you know, your time and creatively and like, you know, making sure that like sometimes what you're doing engineering wise is for work. Other times I imagine there's, you know, passion projects that you're doing as well. And the same thing for music. Like you were saying, you were doing gigs as a guitarist, but then also mm -hmm. like you make music on your own time. How do you, how are you able to delegate your time to all these different things? Because that's been my biggest struggle, you know, ever since taking on multiple projects is making sure I'm feeding all yeah. of these things appropriately. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I mean, as far as, well, the, my clients, like the people who are paying me get priority. Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> I work around them. Um usually if I'm working on something that's that really gets me excited, uh, I'll just get up really early, like 5, 6 a.m. Okay. And spend yeah. like three three hours just just living in this fun this fun project. Uh, and then like the work begins of clients, which does honestly is not really work because I love everybody that I work with but or yeah. work for. But um, I don't know. I just kind of cycle through. I'll say I lost some momentum as a freelancer because I did the series, uh, not being able to like hustle my, my own engineering, if you will, because anytime that I wasn't working, um, 
for for money, like basically the podcasting stuff, I was working on the series. So there wasn't a whole lot of of music stuff happening. So that took that that wasn't a priority. The series was, but now that the series is done, now I'm back to working with the artists. So I don't know. I just kind of cycle through whatever is exciting at the time. It it just combined with with the the schedule of the client work. Gotcha. So well, well you heard it here first. She's back and she's looking for gigs. So please hire <laughs> Jess to, yeah. to mix <laughs> your record. Um but yeah, no, I, I get that. It's and I, I feel like that kind of helps too, because at least if you're going off of a client schedule, then it gives you these kind of benchmarks to where you can go, okay, I can you know, I know that I'm going to have a couple days before I have to mix this, or I know that I'm going to yeah. have, you know, a few hours on this day when I'm free. So that way, like you can plan to do the other stuff you want to in there. I feel like that helps. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, for show. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, uh, bro. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. We're anti-segue, so we just go, man. Yeah. <laughs> we used to have it real wrapped up and showy, but we're just like, that's not us. No, I, I like... Or I, is it? I don't, we're still trying to figure it out. Well, I, I like doing this show because I'm also passionate about interviews and I love podcasts. So, yeah. like, actually during this downtime of, you know, COVID and everything, it was, like, a good time to actually get this project that we had talked about for a few years, like, actually up and running. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I... And, I felt like the first few episodes of this were good, but I was just, as soon as the cameras were on, I was just less of myself and more like proper. And I was like, <laughs> it's like, eh, it's not, you know, 60 minutes or anything, you know, it's like, I just, you know, it's, it's, you know, or even like hot ones. And if it felt know. like 60 minutes, I would just storm off, you know? Yeah. It, I don't know. That's the example that's been set for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, the drummer in my band said, it's like the podcast is good, but I feel like, you know, it's not the same like late night conversation we would have about music and art and life and stuff. And you get like kind of proper all of a sudden. And I went, oh, okay, that's an interesting point of view. And like, yeah, I don't know, just be more relaxed. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, don't need to have a well, caveat weird. being that a drummer yeah. said that. Yeah. But, um, drummer. <laughs> drummers walk around. No, but with that, I get that though. Yeah. Like, like it's this. It's it's awkward. It can't. It's not awkward. It can be awkward. Listen, I can't even say the word. But <laughs> like, uh, green. Uh, it's 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 weird when you are working on a project that is centered around your own voice and your own face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's that's not fair. music. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is our these are our voices, our this faces. Are this like. is us <laughs> being being ourselves. Yep. And that can be vulnerable and a little little strange. And yeah. I think I mean you've you've only Just done a few of these guy. episodes like. You have to figure out your rhythm. Right. I mean, it doesn't just, just doesn't just happen. No, it, it doesn't just happen. And it's also like anything else, like whether it's engineering or it's what I've discovered. And I think you have too. It's like, just like if you're practicing your instrument or you're, you know, working on developing your craft of mixing or engineering, it's like, you're going to watch footage of yourself. You're going to watch the way it's set up and you're going to go, oh, okay. Like I want to change this, this, and this, or even, you know, uh, a few episodes in, it's like, oh, let's change the way the intro happens. And it's just like, let's tweak this. And I'm sure it was the same for you with your, you know, filming as you went, you know, even if you're kind of doing it on the fly, I'm sure (laughs) as you're going, it's like, okay, I want to do this differently. I want to change Oh, I had to recut, recut those episodes like uh, four or five times each because it's just trying to figure out the format because I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So... So yeah, I'm with you. Like, it, like it took a, a lot of time. Yeah. So is there like several alternate takes? Is there like really there episodes of everything? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, there are. But oh. it, it's like I had to. I think I was maybe six episodes in, and mm-hmm. I figured out. Oh, I should just make this like, like a little show with like an introduction and like text. Like my name comes up, and then their name comes up, and like a montage, and like you know the colors and. It's like, oh, this is kind of fun. Yeah. All right. It was so cool. then I had to go back and recut right. the first five of like, okay, well, now I need to do this again. And then, oh, really you know nice. what I should do? Right after I asked the first question, then bring the music in. I like that. Okay. So then I had to go back to the first like six and do that. <laughs> so it was just like this continuously evolving, just running in a circle till I got them all done. Yeah. That's probably why it took me so, so long to do it. So. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. I think that's also behind the curtain about like because we really want to try to highlight the creative process of the people who are doing it. Yeah. Um, like 
really in a self-contained or self-produced way like you are. And that's kind of like the, the, the theory that what you see um, in pop culture, the movies and TV that you're consuming and streaming and stuff, everybody, it's not like it all went according to some plan. I mean, there's money right. behind productions, and of course we did this, this was done a certain way, but the idea that you have it all preconceived as you see it later is kind of like, I've... You know, that's that's an I uh, I guess that's like I want to bring that up because that's a preconceived notion that I mm-hmm. labored under for freaking years about everything, everything I consume, music and everything. Now I realize it's like, yeah, it's actually an important part of the process is just like, you know, it'd be better if I do this. It's all like sculpture. Yep. You know, yeah. chipping away. It's a living, breathing thing. Hell yeah. yeah. That's you know? oh, like, especially hell yeah. anything with music, I really feel like, well, they talk about recording that you captured something, you know, mm-hmm. and it's Trapped like, it. well, think about it. If you're capturing it, if you do that in the wild, that's an actual living thing that you would, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You, find, yeah, you, yeah, you find it. Tra- <laughs> yeah. You find a tarantula in the desert. You scoop it up and put it in a jar. You're it's captured. Right. Speaking so which just there's something behind you. Oh, <laughs> oh, <Christ>. wow. <laughs> I actually, I, I subconsciously did that. I, I wasn't planning on doing that. Nailed it, dog. Yeah, if, 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 if yeah, if, if I took a big net and then captured your friend behind you that's hanging up on the wall, <laughs> then, you know, that's, it's the same thing as if you get a really good guitar solo or vocal take. And it's like, yeah. you're almost taking that person's life force that they're putting into their music and it's on a tangible format forever you know or it's it's yeah. captured in some sort of format forever some sort of forever yeah and that's why and you, like, it, you also have to accept that though like as far as music goes start not mm-hmm. to cut you off oh, no, but no, like no, in, no. That, in that in that moment you're like this is how i was feeling when i played that solo yes i was i was really into the wah wah pedal that day yeah yeah <laughs> right? Right. maybe it doesn't make sense 10 days from now but like that's the day you were recording right that's mm-hmm. what you were feeling yeah that's what you captured and then like when you just got to put it out there and then yeah. move on so, so true. It's actually a little different than than what I was saying in that I would I did do that, but then I, I found something that worked and I had the ability to go back and change it. Right. So it's like two Seems different so ways of thinking mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. when do you stop and when do you just accept like, okay, this is it is what it is. Yeah. You know? Well so. and I and I feel like because of that, when it's just music is really just an expression and it's like like you're just putting it out there and it's, you know, this is the way this solo was, this you know, song was recorded and this is how we were feeling in the moment. It appears like it is effortless because it just can sound that way when you're dealing with really good musicians. It just feels <laughs> like it's effortless. Seems that way. And you don't see yeah. all the effort it takes to actually get it to where it, you know, the audio part of that translates and makes sure that like that emotion comes across, which is that's a whole nother area and discipline that people don't, they're not necessarily aware of, I guess. They don't understand the process. Well, yeah, I'm, you know, you know how far behind the curve I am on engineering <laughs> and all of your stuff. Yeah, but you, you understand the work yeah. that goes into it. But it just now is like starting to dawn on me, like, I think while we were talking about just now, that like <laughs> it takes the same amount of engineering skill to make awesome players in a room come out on the recording sounding mm-hmm. like that gathering did in the room, mm-hmm. right? As it does to make my first band <laughs> when I was 12 sound like it was palatable. <laughs> it takes the same, it's like maybe different sides of the palette in terms of your skill set, but right. it really is the same amount of experience and ability. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really starting to, I still can't do it. I won't even try because I, I just can't. But I'm starting to really respect the crap out of it. Everything I'm doing is going to get mixed and mastered. Yeah. Not just throwing up on SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, yeah. And, oh, no, yeah, enough right. of you. Okay, <laughs> so Jess, um, your drums are, uh, yeah, I just barred right in. Jess, uh, the drums you play on on stuff, it's like some of these drums slap so hard. I got to know, what's your drum process and how do you program drums? Like stuff like the Army of One song comes to mind. Um, oh, wow. Especially that yeah, break in there, really, dude. You, you really did your research. <laughs> I just, I, well, you know, so here's the thing. Cool. If there's people out there, you know, who, who want an example of, like, what production and, like, mixing and engineering when it's done all the way on your project sounds like, go to Jess's website because it's, like, there's different styles of music with each turn. Okay. I was like from yeah. from um, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Noelle Picara. You have oh, yeah. this very jazz inflected cabaret yeah. pop sound that's yeah, just she's cool. oh, it's like chocolate on my peanut butter. It's so good, and it's the <laughs> layering of everything together. That guitar yeah. tone had me like somebody as an engineer thinking about the guitar tone. <laughs> I was like, I could play that lick all day, but I don't think about tone like that. That's somebody's idea. 
So I was, but back to the drums. Yeah, the drums, so the drums. slap so hard. How are you doing them? Well, in that particular song, the Army of One one, um, God, I don't know. I did that such a, that was like 2017, I think. How about um, Infatuation? Another one where the drums like hit me in the face. Like, yeah. it starts out, I really I'm like, I don't like know the about this song. And then the drums kick in, and I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, that has like the battling oh. 808s in the. In yeah. The, yeah. Okay. I was really Did you mad. use actual 808 on that? No, I, I, I'm sure it was like some cheap sample that I found. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't, I honestly don't remember. But as far as, I programmed drums in battery. Back, it, it was battery mm-hmm. three, not I have to work in battery four because I upgraded. So it's too, it's sad. Um, but yeah, it's really just, it, I, I'm very meticulous with picking the samples that I use, if I'm using samples, and just compressing the crap out of them to make them smack, <laughs> basically. That's definitely I mean, what's going on. There's a slate. Snare. There's mm. a slate digital plugin that I really love called the Monster, mm. and you just put that on something, and it just is like, <laughs> it just is, it's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure it's on every production I've ever done. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, but I, I'm just a big. I just love the drums. I'm not really good at playing them, but I really like to hear them. Yeah. So hell yeah, okay, yeah, I love yeah. they're magical sounding. Oh yeah, no, and I. Uh, not being a recording person, but just being friends with a lot of them and, you know, getting to know gear that way. I love all the Slate stuff, you know. Yeah. And just the yeah. har- hardware, any of the plugins, uh, VMS, like all that stuff is just so mm-hmm. good. It is. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's the thing. I, I'm sure there's a ton of plugins that could make the drums smack. I just happen to know that one. Right. And use that one. So it's, I haven't bothered to think outside of it because I just... I love it so much. It's your go-to, yeah. Yeah, but like definitely. those, uh, like the drum break, the way it breaks down in like the I want to call it like the interlude or bridge of Army of One. As I was listening to it, I was like, it's not just that it's a dope production, like good sounds and stuff, and well put together. It's like, it's not your ordinary electronic drum beat at all. You have like little inflections and accents in there that maybe go what what what. <laughs> Good. So that's, that's what I was um, going for. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I think I just peaked something when I shouted, but uh, no. Okay, man. Yeah. Cool. I, you know what's fun about I think about that particular track is um, some of the drums are obviously left and right mm-hmm. with reverb, and then you'll have a dry one. So I think it's like this weird, like, I hear drums, drums, drum. Like it's just, it's it's pulling the reverb off of some of them to where you're, it's it's almost 3D. And so it's like this weird, quick, interactive thing. So that that's one of my all time favorite things too is like, oh, you've got like doo, 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 like your typical reverby drums, and then you have a dry one. Just like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Like, no rules. Like I don't it doesn't have to just be drums. It can be all sorts of crazy sounds that rhythmically yeah. rhythmically make sense. Yeah. Like those know. little hits that feel like a horn section in the in the song Faces, that Noel Picara E P that she did. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. the heck are those sounds in there? Do you, oh. Is it synth or like, it sounds like crazy ring modulated horn thingy? But There's a harmonium maybe that's my ear, huh? In one of them, faces, faces. It's like the first track on the oh, EP. Oh yeah. Think. It has some like in the second verse. It has some like, but it sounds so wild. There, like, it, there's a um, there is a muted trumpet. Okay. With with the the thing totally jammed in there. Okay, it's just I, oh, when I heard that, I was like, this is just tasty. Yeah, I was, little, I was like, you she's know. a cool artist. She's a really cool. That yeah, that that that, that whole EP is like apocalyptic, a post-apocalyptic. Can't say that word. Um, <laughs> a pop, a it's pop, hard because we're living in it. Say so. it. <laughs> <laughs> that must be it. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but so she was ahead of her time. Reference. That's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask a question that came to mind when I was listening to with this cat that reminded me a little of my kind of stuff, which was um, Maloney. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. So, so this on the perceptions EP by this cat, mm-hmm. there's a certain kind of thing going on in like I think the first song or second song, I don't remember which one it was, but it's called "My Wine," and I, and it seems okay. like the guitar and the vocals are set very close in the mix, like they seem very very up front, mm-hmm. and it's not like it's it it goes directly with the song. But I'm wondering, is in a case like that, I couldn't help but wondering. I was like, is this the artist? asking you for this sort of sound or was this you suggesting it to the artist i couldn't get that thought out of my mind like whose idea was that particular kind of setting or it feels like he's just singing right into your ear almost kind of a thing yeah with him he was very much involved in the decision making so i think 
I think that's how we both just kind of heard it. it. Was like this needs to be like aggressive. Okay. So that was part yeah. of the, I, I mean, there wasn't like behind it as you guys were mixing it down and stuff. That was kind of the idea. Like it should be kind of uh, forward. Let's say I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember the song. <laughs> I remember it's making like the, that it's album. It's just like all the guitar EP. and the little organ in the background and his voice for almost the entire song. Yeah. And it's just um, like the, like the rolling kind of arpeggio with the, like the Hammond B3 in the background thing. Right. Super tasty. Yeah. I mean, and it doesn't really get yeah. There's no more instrumentation than that. I don't think. Just yeah, he was he was he was pretty particular. Okay. So I, I I produced that EP, but was basically just his conduit of him. Like he had these ideas. Like I just wanted to be really aggressive or just 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 all up in your face the whole time, and then that's how I mixed it. I guess. I mean, I, I recorded, mixed it, and produced it. So yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of communication. Just a lot of talking. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I would say we both together somehow got there. Yeah. Okay. That's a very particular niche niche style of music for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Teamwork. But it's like the the range with people you work with is like that. I was like, okay, so uh, at just a couple of different tracks between each artist, I was like, the one thing I know is that they're all hella different from each other and they all mm. sound so good. Like, and I mean the track. Yeah, sounds so good. Right, right. So I'm like, I mean, El Royale, the uh, champagne song. Oh yeah, oh, I'm yeah like, I love her. You know, that's that's the funniness. I was like, yo, this is some straight up like Megan the Stallion kind of Migos <laughs> yeah. and Trappy kind of thing. <laughs> I was like, get that, okay. I was like, this is interesting, yeah. but it really had all of that stuff. vibe. Yeah. I was like, yeah. so was that another thing? Was that an artist who had the ideas planned out, or did you help her kind of sculpt the sound? Or uh, no, this that was me just being. I think it should. I think it should be this. And she was like, all right. Do you fuck <laughs> with a lot of rap? You listen to hip hop? You... Yeah. Who do you like? Oh, don't make me. I I I don't I don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you listen to the song, y'all. That's her I credentials. just put on the playlist. Her beats are I fucking sick. Li- I, well, yeah. Your beats are sick. That's what matters most. <laughs> I like beats. I like drums. Hell yeah. No, every song. Every song with a beat. That's why it's like, I don't really, I got to tell you, like, here's how, how, uh, I'm an acoustic drums guy. Like, when I think about hip hop, I think about Quest Love. Like, I just want actual, like, fucking wood drums most of the time. Right. And it's hard to convince me of anything else. But every song I listened to, I was like, no convincing needed. I was like, it sounded awesome. Right, right, right. So, what do you got? Oh, no, I was just thinking, like, in the sense of, I know whenever I've been around a bunch of different musical styles like that, you mm-hmm. know, and getting to be exposed to all of these different people, even just hearing them and working gigs where you're like hearing different kinds of music, mm-hmm. it gets absorbed into me and it'll come out and like either wanting to explore that style more and make it part of my own, or you can kind of absorb it and it ends up coming out and you're playing naturally. Yeah. So you're not just like, experiencing this and like kind of a far away thing of like, Oh, I'm just seeing this at a show that I'm working. You're actually like in the studio with these people, like you're, you sometimes you're producing, sometimes you're just engineering, but you're really like up close and personal, like with all of these different artists. So yeah. you feel like that gets absorbed into your playing and how you approach stuff. Mm. And then yeah, ha- totally. ha- how has that uh, happened for you? Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I definitely get influenced by them. By the projects. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sure after I did the Maloney one, I'm sure I was, like, arpeggiating <laughs> and, like, singing falsetto. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know? Because you get immersed in it. Or at least I do. I don't know how other people do it. But, mm-hmm. like, it's Same for me, it's always... Me. A lot of these are just one-on-one situations. Like, right. they mm-hmm. haven't... Actually, there haven't really been bands. I don't think I've worked with bands mm-hmm. so much as I have just an artist. Right. Huh. This is just occurring to me. Interesting. Do you think so that's a, a specific of... thing, like kind of where you're at? I feel like that's a New York thing almost. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I've kind of, oops, I've kind of been all over. Um, How long have you been there? I was in, uh, two years. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So I, I've lived in New York three different times. So this is my third go. That's how New York is. That's all right. Uh, yeah. My family's from just... Jersey, so you know, I'm I'm a bridge and tunnel rat. So I hate you get... that city. <laughs> that's funny. I it's a cool city too. Yeah, uh, I was in Virginia, and then. Berkeley, California, and, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's probably more about my resources. It's not like I could have a drummer come in and play here. 
right or any any anywhere that i've lived like my my setup is really better for a one-on-one so i guess that's how it's been happening right uh would your yeah. neighbors like lose their shit if you had a drummer come in or something or do you got neighbors yeah. next door? well yeah. i have, first of all i don't have room for drums i have oh, a wow. drum kit and it's in a basement which is really sad um oh, that is sad in in cases, just stacked. Oh, at least they're in like, cases. Uh, <laughs> Better than I can yeah, at least room. they're in cases. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I don't I don't know where I was going with that. But well, no, just uh, <laughs> that's how my questions take people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we I were, just uh, went somewhere. Every time I leave, people stoned. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Everyone's like, "What?" Yeah, uh, take it. No, it's uh, we were talking about just being influenced by the recording projects you were working yeah, on. That's definitely and, um, yes, definitely. Yes. I also feel like music, uh, uh, there's definitely still room for bands nowadays, and there's a lot of people in bands, so it's not like bands are like out of fashion or anything, but music hey. predominantly is... So sorry to interrupt. Aren't what? you in a band? Yeah. What's the name of the band? The name of the band is Rogue yeah. with an exclamation point. Uh, okay. And they're streaming on all platforms, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, but I, I wasn't going to do... I, I was, not going, was not, not going to do the shameless plug. I was not going to do the shameless plug. I want this plug. for us. Uh, Go check it out. Well, and it's it's funny how things work out because the reason why I know about Ray Lynn <laughs> is because we got our EP mastered at Infrasonic See? by Pete, and yeah. she was the person answering the emails and doing the questions back and forth, and that's how we became friends. So it's over uh, email. Yeah, yeah. She would do that. She's that cool. Yeah, she, is that she cool. can <laughs> cultivate a friendship like over email. <laughs> yeah, no, like, that's and it how was, badass she is. Yeah, she was she was super cool, and but also uh, at the Nam show this year in January, Pete was doing a talk, and mm. I wanted to meet. You know, I wanted to say hi, and you know, you wanted to meet Pete. I wanted to meet Pete, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so she was there, and I just I didn't know the face going with the name, and so she was just standing there next to Pete, and I thought she was like waiting to talk to Pete, and I didn't realize oh, that the, I didn't I didn't know that no. she was the person like answering all the emails and stuff. So I was just kind of like, oh, can I? Uh, and she was like, yeah, like whatever, like this is just <laughs> Pete, you know, and and it was just was. yeah, it was just funny, but. Yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely a, a small world in terms of like you know just but the that connections day, you make. And, you guys did realize that you were the pen pals, right? Uh, yeah, uh, or not, not that day. Not immediately. I knew that. Like, really? I, well, we started talking like <laughs> when really when all the lockdown <laughs> stuff started to happen. So it was like. Uh. Uh, I had commented on a story that she had posted or a post and like we ended up like just talking and then we were just both really bored. And so like I had mentioned that I was watching like some uh, Bill, it was a uh, life aquatic with Bill Murray. And she was like, Oh, I love uh, Bill Murray. And I was like, and she was like, Hey, like, you know, it's like, can we like, you know, I don't know, watch the movie at the same time and just text back and forth. And I was like, yeah, like, I'd love to do that. Cause that's stuff that I would do with my friends anyway, like getting a big group of people together and you couldn't get people together. Cause you know, well, you COVID. could, but only if you're bad. Yeah. If you're a bad person, right? If you wanted to die. But also, can I just <laughs> rewind five steps and be like, is there? Show me a person who's like anti Bill Murray. Show me one person who comes yeah. out with a hot take. Anti I don't like fun. Bill Murray. I don't think he's funny. I don't like how he goes around ingratiating himself. Like, does anybody really feel that way about Bill Murray? Either? No, it's anti fun, in my opinion. Exactly. So it's like, I it's mean, like de I'm, rigueur to say, you know, oh, yeah, but, I like Bill Murray. It's like. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, I like Jesus. We all like Jesus. He's our savior. Come well, on. <laughs> <laughs> well, He's like, our Lord. Well, it's like, dude, who doesn't love Bill Murray, though? It's like, I'd be hard pressed. That's to what find I that. just said, but <laughs> yeah, you guys are saying the same thing. Yeah, the same thing, but I wasn't being rhetorical. <laughs> right. Um, well, and you that's know, now, a great story, by the way. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> that's such a great story. Well, He's the, actually so full the, of great stories. The Raylan though. story. The well, Raylan story. You yeah. Guys are no, I, uh, you know. at, at the beginning of her episode, you could see me uh, talking about my Richard Simmons story, where like we were rolling and we hadn't officially started <laughs> yet, and we decided just to keep it in. The Richard Simmons running. Yeah. It is so not I was to gonna believed. say you can you can check out that episode, and you know, basically we gotta pop just, that pic on the Instagram too. Y- yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, but this leads me to something. Actually, thinking about all yeah. this, like. Have you found that like weird, like, you know, small world sort of connections and what you do and like everybody kind of knows everybody and it's like a kind of a tight knit community and you end up in these, you know, just sort of similar <laughs> situations, I guess. Yeah, I would say in, in, in the audio world. Definitely. Yeah. 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 What is that? Everything OK? Yeah. I have <laughs> I have a uh, Tourette syndrome. 
and I think my no, I, went, I just heard like a bell. Off. I heard a bell. Yeah. It was oh, like I heard it too, but I don't. I don't think that was us. How could it be so loud? I don't know. It's probably my you'll have to cut this. <laughs> yeah. Let's just cut this. Right. Uh, but yeah, no. Every it is a small world, and I feel like in the in the especially as a woman, because all the like a woman in in music production that is studio work. I feel like everybody knows everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there's always this like, it's like, oh yeah, I know this person. I know that person. Yeah. Even though I didn't, see, I'm, I'm, I am contradicting myself, yes, but I did not know that, God, I keep hitting this, the, the 12 people that I, I interviewed, but they were, I found them through through the, the databases, so it's like, we're still all connected. This is a shit answer, sorry. No, no, no. It's, I'm going it, to just... It, it actually... Oh, I, we'll cut that you're too. You're going to have to beat that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can definitely well, say no, that. I've heard that shit. word before. Fuck it's no. okay. <laughs> Uh, but also it really speaks to kind of that point, I think, to begin with, because you didn't know them previously and all it took was you just starting this project and going like, yeah. I want to interview these people. And then now yeah. you actually are connected. And so, yeah. Yeah. and because it wasn't a huge leap to do so, I really feel like, like, yeah, you didn't necessarily know them, but it still is a small world and that all it took was just a reaching out and they were like, oh, I'm game. Like I'm in for this project. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. agree with that spirit. You knew intrinsically that they were uh, somewhat like you, kindred spirits in a way. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Um, I agree with that. Thanks, player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess, I don't know, I just wanted to know, too, like, who are your main engineering and musical influences? Because that's always a question I'm curious about. Hmm. Well, I love John Congleton Okay. as a producer. He particularly Nelly Furtado's indie album that he made with her. Mm. I don't know if you guys. Which album is that? No, what's up with this? I forgot. I God, again with the names and the titles. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, don't know. <laughs> I gotta stop asking. It, <laughs> it's it, it's I love it's, Nelly um, Furtado. I, I but I don't remember all the record names she, either. She I'd did it. Yeah, she did an indie album, and I say indie because it wasn't like a big pop production like that she you know like did with Timberland. Like right. This was in 2017. Like ah. synths and like it, I, it, it's just one of my all time favorite. Albums, but I like I like the work that he does in particular. Cool. Um, but geez, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I, I I I'm on the spot. I don't know. It's all it's all That's good. Okay. It's all Same good. Same thing happens <laughs> to me when you ask if you ask me like, well, who are your like most influential bands or something? I'd be like. <gasps> I don't know yeah. the names of bands that play music. Like, yeah, it's right. just gonna happen, you know. Now, I, like, in all, I will tell you this in all honesty, though. Like huh. with the work that I've been doing since I finished the series, I totally reference all of the women uh, with some of the tips and tricks that they have Word. that they showed me. Yeah, in in the work that I'm doing, like you know, like Vera's episode, like oh, if you need some low end, just like double the bass and drop the octave and tuck it in. Or like Kia's like, oh, if you want to do like a stereo spread, but you don't have a, you don't have a stereo spread plug-in, then route it to two mono tracks, put the same delay on, you know, change the, the timing a, a bit. So I reference them all the time. Yeah. Like a creep, like in my head. <laughs> like I'm, I'm producing a song right now for an artist and all I can hear is Angel like guiding me on like what to do, like find the emotional connection. Like <laughs> it's like. Yeah. That's so cool. So like. You know, they're they're all up they're all up in there. Yeah, was, yeah. Well, that's but in a good way. In a good way. Right, but that's. I mean, I feel like we all do the same thing to a certain extent in our re- respective medium, mediums. You know, and yeah. part of that just comes from you know, it's almost not to geek out too much. You'll appreciate this. It's like a Star Wars thing when like you know he's still hearing Ben Kenobi like even way after you know. How is it even possible? Yeah, and it's like he's just remembering that guiding voice of like, oh yeah, like I'm supposed to do this, and it's like. You can easily like whether it's coming from a colleague or a mentor. It's like that stuff sticks with you, and it's it's hard to forget that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Totally. Hey, how long <laughs> you been playing guitar, Jess? Ooh, uh, <laughs> let's see. I was. How do I say this without giving away my age? <laughs> Probably mm. about about twenty something years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So you started very young. You were three or four, yeah. and that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's right. Started immediately <laughs> yes. after birth. There was a yes, that's that's I am that yeah, yeah. Immediately yeah. after birth, we all started practicing. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty much like you get put into the crib, yeah. you know, coming home from the hospital, and then you get handed a little miniature like Fender strap. See, I don't know if my dad was throwing the drumsticks to me, but he would frequently throw the drumsticks into the crib on his way to the bed when he was getting home for the gig. 
Right. So Here, and then, I think he was passing them to me, but it wasn't a handoff so much as just tossing them towards the crib. Right. And then you were like, hey, I could use these. I just, you know, right. the little bars became my xylophone. Mm-hmm. It was a good childhood. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, well, I'll add the, you know, yeah. the finish the trifecta of that story. Yeah. Do it. Though my, uh, I was going to say, growing up, my grandfather my dad's side was a bass player my dad's a guitar player but he was a bass player so in the house Mm -hmm. we have this old stand-up bass from like the 30s that like he gigged with (sighs) and it's not in playing Mm -hmm. shape anymore but it's just always been in the house so it was like this thing like kind of powerful thing in the corner of like ooh, what is that that and has a presence. There's nothing like an upright yeah. bass, dude. God, yeah. his yeah. mind's so fertile. Yeah, no, and it's weird. As I got older, I found out that he, like, would gig around, like, all the resort towns in SoCal. So he would go to, like, all the lake stuff, and he'd be yes. playing, like, jazz standards. Nice. And then I'm like, oh, so he was, like, kind of – I'm not a jazz person per se, but, like, kind of doing the same thing of, like, traveling around and gigging and doing stuff like that. And I went, oh, it's weird. It's kind of in the in the blood, I guess. I don't know. It, it's genetic. This stuff is totally genetic. I I, I firmly I think so. That. Yeah. Yeah. You come from a musical family for sure, I'm sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, not right. really just my mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. matrilineal. Sometimes in your, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I used to, um, I would sneak her really nice guitar. Um, <sighs> what she have? Like, she had a, this cool 1970s Yamaha guitar from like Japan or something with nice. these really cool inlays and it sounded beautiful and it looked beautiful. And I would sneak it like and hide like under the stairs and teach myself how to play it. There was a chord book in the, the case and I would flip through and find the really easy looking chords like A. <laughs> right. And then like like a D. Like, oh that's just three fingers. I'll learn that one next. Yeah. So I was like teaching myself guitar like on the fly because I knew she didn't want me to touch it because it was really nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Trouble. But then eventually I was caught and then got my own instruments. So nice. That's yeah. so cool. But yeah, it definitely comes from my mom for sure. Heck yeah. Cool. Do you have any yeah. uh, any influences on guitar as far as a player since you've been playing for a little while? Not no. that you have to name people. There's no names. <laughs> no. I don't. You just play. I, well, I mean, I, I I when I was really getting into playing the blues, I listened to a lot of Janis Joplin. So it's not nice. necessarily a Janis Joplin, you know, like a guitarist. Basically, whoever she was playing with, mm-hmm. whoever her guitarist was. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I don't know who that person was. I right. should. But I don't. Who cares? But I, was, I learned no, all her I mean, songs. No, no, yeah. Big Brother and the Holding Company is a tight band, but it's about Janice for a lot of reasons. Right. I mean. well, but I'm, I love the guitar. Like, I learned really? all the guitar parts for Did the songs. You? Like, all the solos Actually, and stuff. you know what? I learned a couple of those tunes when we had the old cover band for the school, and I was like, you know what? Yeah. Well, those parts slap. They're cool. Yeah. They are. Yeah. yeah what is a uh, piece of my heart? Got some Yo. nice licks. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Ball, <laughs> ball and chain, too. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the the guitar solo on that is so wrong that it's right, you know, as far as it, it's <laughs> so raunchy the way that the way it's played, you know. Nice. Um yeah. Um But that was definitely a big that was a big influence for sure with the Yeah. The well, blues that's cool as hell. Playing. I'm, I'm the same way too. Like I, I love as far as there's certain styles of music that I would say that like I'm kind of a connoisseur in in the sense of like I love just deep diving into bands that I've never heard before and really like studying the style and like seventies rock is one of those for me. Mm. And I don't necessarily know the members of all the bands, but I know like there's certain tones, especially like, um, you know, on Humble Pie stuff, it's like the bass tone on some of those songs, like 30 Days in the Hole is like exactly what I want. It's like that, that like round, best friend that, <laughs> that, that, that round, like it's, it sounds like it's this warm round note, but it's also like clear and precise and cuts through the mix so well of like how does it sound like it's not so specific and like there's no trouble on this but i can hear everything so clearly Hmm. and it's like that 70s rounded bass tone anytime i hear that i don't even know if i know the player but i'm like oh i'm all about this this is great i should be able to tell you but i can't remember yeah i can't think of it off the top of my head either i know uh steve marriott and peter frampton i should know who the bass there you go that's what you i can always remember yeah marriott's a cool yeah um as is framps Right. Man, that's my one cool name story. It was like, God, walking by, God, what the hell year is that? Like 2002, just walking the main floor where the guitars are. Mm-hmm. You know how it used to be back in the day. It's not all glammed out like it is now. It used to right. be much more like a swap meet, like a big ass swap meet. <laughs> right, right, right. And I uh, walked by and I saw this little white dude kind of plugging in and strummed a chord or two and then started playing the riff. And then I was like, and what? I mean, he was about like here sitting on a stool. Yeah. And I'm walking down the alleyway and I'm like, oh, that's 
this Peter Frampton? Yeah. And my mind was like, this is Peter Frampton. And then he started playing and singing like he was just at where he was doing his booth for the day. Yeah. And I just walked past it and no one was there. And then within like fucking like 20 seconds, everyone was there. Right. Such a cool moment. You got to catch those before uh, they start plugging in. Yeah. And And it was in those days before everybody was doing this in your face. Yeah. 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 Not that I don't do that now, but it was a cool moment that we all had to remember (laughs) with our eyeballs and our cortexes. Yeah. And uh, gotta, gotta save it. Up you know, here. in the post apocalypse, we'll get back to that eventually. But for oh, now, absolutely, we're gonna engineer stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna record and we're gonna make. We're uh, gonna edit biotechnology podcast. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, just kind of wrapping things up. Um, I saw on your website you had a speaking out section, and you were talking about you know, and, <laughs> and uh, it, well, in the sense of like just with your approach, you're really vocal about you know, equality in the music industry and you're really vocal about, you know, just, you know, equal hiring for, you know, women who work in engineering or music or whatever it is. And I just wanted to kind of ask, like, as far as just what you would like to do and what your hopes are in general, like, what would you like to see changed from just your perspective? You know, what do we have to change? Yeah. You know, because I'm oh, I'm I'm a dude. Yeah. I mean, I can only say so much about it. You're actually dealing with You're it. You're a dude. First. Well, allegedly, <laughs> I don't I'm know. Out of here, <laughs> I, as as the wise uh, man once said, "I'm a dude. He's a dude. She's a I dude. Thought you were we're a all tall, dudes. stately Danish woman. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I could be. I don't know. I haven't yeah, figured we'll get, that we'll out yet. We'll figure that out off mic. Um, but no, I would like <laughs> to just hear it from your perspective. What would you like to see change? What do you think needs to change? Yeah, that's a good one. Um. I think I think people need to, and this is specific to women working in music production. Uh, that, that's what needs to change, is the numbers. I think people need to ask themselves, are they gatekeepers? Meaning, do they have any influence on who is hired at any point in the process to work on the album? Are they produce, uh, do they have any say on who their producers are, who their engineers are, who their mixers are, who their mastering engineers are? And if the answer is yes, if you are a gatekeeper, then you need to ask yourself, well, does my mental Rolodex include women? Do I have any women under consideration? Like if, if, if you're a, even like an artist manager, if you're like assembling a team for a new album and you've got a studio picked out and you're like, well, we need, a, we need an engineer. Do you have a woman that you can think of? I'm not saying just hire a woman. Right. But do you have one to consider? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Basically, and if you don't at any step in the process, then you need to. Yeah. You just need to like bloop, put them in the, the Rolodex. That's yeah. all. So that way, when, when you're assembling your team and you're flipping through your people and, uh, you know, you're, you're finding your folks, like you, you, need to, you need to think about hiring a woman. Yep. And, and maybe you will and maybe you won't. But just women just need that opportunity to be considered. That's it. And and if the consideration is legit and real, then that will most likely lead to some hires at some point. Yeah, for so sure. We just need the opportunity. I mean, because the thing is, is we're out there, we're doing this work. There's a ton of us, but we're just like people just don't know it, you know. Right. So if you are a gatekeeper and you have any say at any point in the process of making an album, you need to ask yourself, have I considered a woman? And that also goes for gear companies when it comes to their advertisements. Yeah. Are you putting women in your ads? Are you doing are you... those bullshit objectifying ads and shit that I have in all my old guitar magazines? Like, oh well, yeah, well, I think those days have, have come to an end for the most part. Yeah, mostly they still find a subtle way of working them in, believe it or not. I mean, like, I'm not going to call out names, but me neither. I could though I'm call full out of names. names. I'm like you. Yeah, <laughs> I have all the names. Like, <laughs> right. Don't even. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, right. But you know, like, but but you know, the gear companies need to consider sponsoring women. Putting women in their 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 YouTube videos of like how to use this, yeah. you know, like yeah. every everybody involved in the process just needs to add a woman to the Rolodex at some point. Yeah, uh, no, that's I what to- I want to see. I totally agree. I I want people in general that are just. I, I want people that are excited about what they do and passionate, and they fit into like this whole big thing that we call music, you know? So it's like, they're, you know, like I said, you're kind of, we're all a little bit weird doing this or we're a little bit kooky and we all are passionate about this. Yes. And so, yeah, I think if the consideration is there, the hiring will happen naturally because 
once you're in those circles of people, you'll find people that you click click with. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, we need, like you said, don't just hire a woman because, oh, we need to do this. It's like, no, no, you will be great for your, like the styles that you're into and already have produced well or have engineered well. You'll find more people that want to do that. You know, you'll find people that'll click with you the same way that, you know, like someone else will find somebody that fits into their style the same way anybody gets gigs. You know, you find the yeah. people that you fit in with and then that's, it's not even a factor of the concern of don't just hire a woman. It's like, there's so many women out there doing it on a level that is as good as can be done. They yeah. should be in the professional realm. Yeah. Um, you're just exit. You're blocking them out of the opportunity for some reason. I can't still figure out. Right. Yeah, Cause it holds us all back. Don't- they don't they don't know necessarily realize it either. I mean like right. if you you know who you know. Like if but you have to ask yourself if I really believe in equality or equity in the music business, what can I do? Just take a minute, research, literally google it or go to makeitequal.com. Mm. Type in, you know, engineering in in New York or whatever. You're going to get a ton of names. Just grab a Boom. few, research a few, just click on their websites and then like right. make a mental note. That's all you have to do. Yeah. That's it. I feel like people straight get up. yeah. I feel like people get stuck into their social circles to an extent too. Because people are stupid. True. Well, yeah, and it, it's it's <laughs> just exp- you know, and or oh. use use the people in your social circles to potentially expand out to get to know more people. Because like when I had when our band EP was getting mixed, I went to um, there's I don't know if you know him, but his name is Chris Constable, and he's a freelance engineer in L.A. and he worked for Stephen Slate for a while and worked at the L.A. <laughs> Recording School. And but I knew him because he grew up out here, and I had mutual friends of his, and I knew that he was really good at what he did. So he also likes the kind of music that we're producing and so or we were making rather and so it was like for me that was my first choice of like oh okay yeah. i'm gonna go to i'm gonna see if chris can do this just because he's from the desert he grew up in punk bands you know doing this for no money and it's like he gets the diy thing so i'm going to chris mm-hmm. but through that you know we got to work with pete and not only you know have i met pete since then but i met ray lynn and you know expanded my sh- social circle so like She's somebody that, like, now is on my radar of, like, oh, if Pete can't do something, Ray Lynn can definitely master it. And it's, like, and the same thing with working in a theater. It's, like, I've met, you know, women who are lighting engineers, and it's, like, oh, wow, like, I don't know when, you know, my band would ever need to be able to hire a lighting person, but it's, like, all the lighting people in my Rolodex are, like, they're all women, and it's, like, well, if I ever need a lighting person or can recommend them for a job, they're getting first call because they're phenomenal at what they do. But that's just my social circle of like already meeting those people. So I kind of feel like it just takes a you know a little bit of time or a little effort just to like yeah naturally effort. expand. Yeah, just you know take the effort and kind of just try to meet some cool people that are outside of your normal realm of who you'd be socializing with. Okay, I will. <laughs> Great. I, I mean, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll try, and I'll start <laughs> with women. That's that's where it starts. Anybody that's cool, just bring them into the mix. You know, it's like yeah, just 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 consider them. Yeah, yeah, that's I, all. They I, are half of people. Yeah, it's a <laughs> study <laughs> show <laughs> from the University oh, of Christ. Science study yeah. show. <laughs> hmm. But uh, I, d- I do love this topic though, because when people are like, "Well, but how how will we know if they're good?" That's when I get to drop the series, like, "Well, I have proof." Yeah, yeah. Pro- ah. that's when you get to Proof. be like, look at my passion project. Pro- yeah. Proofinmusic.com. Yeah, boom. That's, I always boom. hate that when it feels like a forced thing. It's like, no, man, I just want to hang around cool people who are just as passionate as I am. I don't give a fuck like what their nationality is or where they come from. It's like, are yeah. they cool and a little bit, you well, know, off center? I care if they're from it's the like... south. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care either. No, nah, dude, it's I, I want it to be a big open, big open jam, big open party. You know, if you're cool, come on in. So I appreciate uh you taking the time to talk about your perspective today and just getting to hear your point of view on things. It's much appreciated. And uh before we wrap this up, if you want to just, you know, anything you want to plug besides, you know, proof and music or anything you'd like to say before we wrap things up. Hire women. Yes. Hire women, and uh, That's it. you can. I'm down. <laughs> yep, and you fire can... a few men. Have a fucking fun day, gatekeeper. <laughs> I will. I will say that I I, I did record a some, a song recently, and I did hire a male engineer. So fire him. I, it goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so he knows what it's like. <laughs> just just you know, and and you know why I hired him because I like him, and he yeah. had really great he had really great gear. I'm like I'm to- I'm so gonna work with that guy, and then I did. So. Cool. 
That's awesome. Anyway, yeah. But, but yeah, just, consider, just consider, just consider, <laughs> consider expanding your cir- your circles, as you said, and just consider looking into some women as well, in addition to the men. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm all about it. So you can find, uh, if you're interested in checking it out, you can find Jess's series on YouTube at Proof in Music. Uh, you can find that on Instagram as well. Uh, and also you can just go to JessFenton.com and look at all the stuff that she's engineered and, you know, what her rates are and if this will, uh, you know, if this is something that you're interested in. So, yeah. Take a listen hey. and take a whirl. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks. You'll be glad you thanks did. for having me, guys. Yeah, thank no, you. Guys. Thank, this you. Was fun. thank you so much. Yeah, this was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, it was great getting your perspective on things. And uh, yeah, we hope you have a good rest of your night. I will. Thank All you. Right. You know, it's a really like subtle you have to really dig in but it's kind of like what's subtle but you have to dig in wait hold is this on. outro yes <laughs> we should clap sync before you because this thought sounds interesting okay clap sync hanamanapia okay now what's going on wayne's world that was the wayne's world when they transition to different memories and go to the scooby-doo ending right and, the happy and they ending. do the rain wipe they do and uh my I- least favorite of <laughs> all screen wipes yeah um but, the, but it works a, for dreams. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a really subtle moment in that that kind of is a real jab at like I think all of like prefabricated like bullshit entertainment where Garth is looking at the set of Wayne's World when they get signed and he goes, "We're looking at Wayne's basement, but it's not Wayne's basement. Isn't that weird?" And everybody goes, "Yeah, that is weird." And that's just kind of a funny line until you think about like what's genuine and what's not. And I don't know, maybe it's because I overthink things like Wayne's World and I read into it way more than I should. Uh, that's part of it. <laughs> no, you, you are just such a natural empath and you go meta very quickly, which is great, but I'm like, you find it where it's not. Like in that movie where I don't, well, I don't, I don't see that. I'm also so... I think they were going for that. Yeah. But I don't know that I achieved what you saw in that it's, moment. It, it just, never occurred to me, but what you said makes sense. I don't know. It just makes me think about like... All the things that like are not Wayne's basement. They try to set them up as Wayne's basement. Like, hey, this is just a fun time like we've been having. And you go, no, this is not. This is a prefabricated fun time. It's not real, man. That's what I think about. Yeah, but what does it really mean? I was like, I don't know. The idea of being in the basement in the first basement with a TV camera, just like there's a camera here. I was like, it's still a simulation of a conversation, just yeah. like your life is a simulation of actually existing. Well, it's like, because you're not doing it. Well, obviously <laughs> you're seeing the show devolve by this episode because I was coming in very prepared and I had a notebook and now I'm just coming in with a beanie and my hair's all disheveled. and well, we're trading places maybe because I have yeah, <laughs> now you have the notebook. Just off cami. <laughs> now, yeah, now you have the notebook and pretty soon eventually I'm going to just come in in a bathrobe and just, you know, just from just waking up and like, all right, let's do this. Well, that'll, be, that'll be cool. I'll have my pinstripes, <laughs> my bespoke pinstripe thing and monocle and you'll have your bathrobe. But it'll yeah. be like kind of soiled, like yeah. hard night at the Hard Rock. Yeah, you're you're going to be the person that's sitting there and doing the NPR famous Mike lean, and you're going, uh, "Why welcome to this American life?" Uh, yeah, why you? Why Susie was a checkout girl at the local grocery store. Yeah. Uh, who's that dude that does the book? My Ira Glass. Um, <laughs> he's the guy that sounds like this. I think what guy? Uh, no, it's Jerry um, Seinfeld. Ding, no, ding, 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 hundred points. No, nothing against him. I I honestly forget I his hope name. Not. Be, no, it, it was certainly just, not because of his heritage. No, there, there was a. Well, I don't, I don't know anything about this person. I don't know anything about, about this person? person. There's a guy that it's, it's an NPR show that gets rebroadcast on KCRW, one of my favorite stations. Shout out, yeah, not lo- a sponsor. Love KCRW. Um, but there was a show I heard on there that was a guy doing a show about interviewing authors in a book show. And oh, he, that's Michael Silverblatt. That's my boy. Yeah. You're talking about Bookworm. Yeah, Bookworm. You're talking about Michael Silverblatt. Yeah. He has it's a okay voice. Today I'm talking with When you were developing novels, the character, why? Joyce Carol Oates. Yeah, like. Her new novella, a shocking portrayal no. of a family torn apart. This is not an attempt By to tragedy. This is not an attempt to be mean. This is not an attempt to like like shit. I love me like, some Michael Silverblatt. Well, right. I I'm not a huge fan, but it's just a matter of 
I was just listening to this guy's voice, and it sounded like the, a character that someone would create for a bit because it just sounds like... Oh, <laughs> you would think, but the dude's so real. Well, right. It sounds like a little bit like that do- droopy dog, like, well, okay there. And it's like... Curious. It, to me, anyway, and that's why it's like... You have large ears. Well, <laughs> I, I, it's I better do. to hear with, my dear. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It was just... <laughs> it was something where I heard it. I didn't think it was real at first. I thought it was a bit, and then He's I realized... Real. <laughs> Neither am I. We are all just... We're figments of each other's imagination. Allegedly. Because this is a purely solipsistic, solipsistic simulation. Okay. When you made that mouth, that scared me. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I thought was... you were turning into a robot because I said, I said it out loud. <laughs> you, you would crack, you would crack the code. I tear off your face and go cyborg. I don't know. I might. Uh, he might. It's not too late. But God. no, I, I, don't, I don't want to dig. I don't want to dig bookworm or knock it down. I, I was just, it was a voice that threw me off guard in the same way that the NPR. I think you've apologized enough. I think we know that yeah. you don't mean anything as Michael Silverblatt. I'd like to put out that I've been listening to that show since I was in college the first time, which was 20 years ago. Like, mm. I love Michael Silverblatt's show. I listened to 100 episodes at least. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not currently a case Harris w subscriber but i have been four years in the past mm. and i've been alive for almost 40 so that's saying something i really I'm should a good angelino yeah i've subscribed i really should i'm trying to conserve funds as best as possible right now just with the whole situation but i feel See, i'm trying to spend money in the hopes that it makes them do the stimulus faster <laughs> they'll sense my panic See, just love each <laughs> no other reason. but we're also yeah, just opposite so much sides love, of the like, lava lamp. i like your idea but this is what i've been doing well i that's one of those things that eventually i will become a member because i have listened for long enough now to where i feel a little bit guilty for not supporting this station that i like so much You'll, you'll, I mean, like, the giveaways and stuff are pretty sweet. Like, yeah. you know, now you have to go online, which is why it's been harder to subscribe. I love yeah. I loved calling in. I yeah. think you still can. But anyway, uh, enough about them. Let's talk about Jess, because we had a lovely time talking with Jess. Yeah, well, I had, I had heard... We again, got to the heart of the matter. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did get to the heart of the Come matter. Um, yeah, no, I, I already liked the series from, you know, just seeing it online, and she just had this vibe of, like, a cool, chill, down-to-earth person. And then, you know, again, getting a lot of mentions on this episode, Ray Lynn, my friend. Uh, shout out. Shout out. The wild one. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, like, I had mentioned, like, hey, I've been talking to Jess, you know, on Instagram, and I think I want to get her on the podcast. She was immediately like, oh, do it. She's going to be such an awesome guest and, like, couldn't recommend her highly enough. So that kind of sealed it for me, and I just reached out and said, hey, like, you know, we're doing this podcast. Do you want to be a part of it? And pretty much instantly said yes. And um, I don't. I think if I my memory serves, I had asked her about some camera and gear tips actually before I even asked her to be a guest. And she said, "Hey, if you need help with anything, let me know." I thought, "Wow, how nice of her." And then I thought, "Well, hey, why don't you just become a guest? You know, since you're so rad and cool to offer me camera and gear tips." Hell yeah! So yeah, I can't deny she was both rad and cool. Yeah, and uh, normally double positives really, you know, they irk me. But she was that rad. She was that cool. She was that down to earth. Uh, I mean, seriously, I'll go listen to the tracks she's put up with people she's produced and engineered for on her website. Yep, on justfenton dot com because it's just so. It, it is just a. F- I had a fun afternoon. Yeah, I had a fun afternoon listening to the level of craft. Like again, I'm learning how important audio engineering really is. I'm starting to love the people doing it. I'm still going to let them do it. Yeah. You know, just like I let the physicists do their physics. <laughs> I don't interrupt the motherfuckers even though I know better. Yeah. It's like Bunsen burner. No, thank you. I'm like, listen, Neil, that's not exactly how the math goes. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't do that. Right. I let Neil do Neil. Yep. Absolutely. Now, and- let me tell you, this is going on a t-shirt. Jess Fenton, thank you for this. Because she was going through, talking about, I had to write it down, side side style, because I was so excited. She was talking about the different uh portions of of the series talking to different artists and so, somehow this came up she said drop the bass uh wait what was it double the bass drop the octave and tuck it in and i was like that my friends is a t-shirt i think it could be i'll hey. say it again double the bass drop the octave and tuck it in if you don't i mean you don't have it's because it just feels right you don't have to know what it means it doesn't have to mean anything well i'm gonna throw this out in the world jess if you're watching this outro, I'm going to text this to you, too. But just as a reminder, yeah. that you got to put that on a T-shirt. Again, marketing. We were talking about swapping ideas. I'm going to cook up the T-shirt press. I got one at home. Let me get it going. Yeah. Swears. Got to send that but to But I you. wrote it down for later. Yeah. So I wouldn't forget. Speaking of just letting people do what they do. Just letting them do what they want without yeah. consent? Yeah. Well, no. 
Ah, no, gotcha. No. You've been harvied. You trapped me right I there. I trapped you. you. You tried to get me. Yeah. Not today, sir. I have a, what was that cast name? I just uh, Ronan Farrowed you. <laughs> That's uh, what I did. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who that is. The guy who wrote the tell all shit about the whole thing. Is the, the, we'll talk uh, about it off mic. Okay. Anyway. Don't look it up on the internet. This He's is a this hero. Is a, this is a great segue into the one shout out that I get for Maximum Max Taylor, who is running the engineering <sighs> stuff behind the scenes. Because uh, unlike the first episode, Thank I don't want to shout on your him. Phone all day, Max. Yeah, I, <laughs> I uh, just like the unlike the first episode, I realized that we should just keep the uh, shout outs to one meaningful short shout out for Max. So you just is, gave him two, technically. Technically, but it's you know kind of like a part two of the 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 one that we're in right they now. They say if you say his name three times in a row, he appears on camera, and you know you do not want that. We're saving no. that for those other things, those other future projects, which we won't talk about right now. Yes. Uh, secret. We're we're cooking up some uh, other f- types of podcasts that will be on Sonic City Council. It's so. gonna be like the blue Breaking Bad meth of internet music based content. Oh my! Wow, <laughs> I shocked you with that. You shocked me so my hard. My headphones came Bucky's off. Headphones. <laughs> oh my god! Now goodness. that ain't the right place to break this up. I don't know what it is, brother. It's the beanie. They're a little bit uh. It's slippery head. They're not as yeah. They're not as <laughs> grippy as they normally are. No, grippy, an no, audio engineering term. Grippy, really? No, it's not. Oh, I was excited. Yeah. Um, I almost went to write it down. <laughs> write it down. That'll be our Grippy. first shirt. Right. Grippy. Anyway, yeah, so Max, thank you, and also thank you to Amped Music and the Showcase uh, for helping us with this podcast. And, thank you. Uh, lots of exciting things in the work on that. But again, just wanted to give a quick thank you for that. And also, thank you to you for watching us on yet another edition of Sonic City Council. We appreciate you. If you've been watching, I'm watching you. Yeah. And I approve of you. (laughs) Thank you. Join us next episode. Yeah. We'll see you next week. And this council is adjourned. City Council was created by Jesse Davidson and Davey Sipes and engineered by Max Taylor at Desert Sound Studio in Palmdale, California. Thank you to Disaster Cabinet for the outro music. Intro music written by Max Taylor. Sonic City Council is produced in association with Amped Music Academy and the Showcase Venue. For more information, visit theshowcasevenue.com.